calm down one question at a time. First, I want to say thank you all so much for helping me get to 5,000 subscribers. And if you're watching this, I greatly appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, don't forget to hit a like on your way out. Anyway, on with the video. That's right, no questions. I'm out of here. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, it's definitely a little bit chilly out here. I think it was like minus eight last night, so not horrible, but definitely enough to grab another blanket for, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and as you guys seen in the last video, I have a dud heater. So I have been messing with it. I have it firing up right now, or at least trying to. And uh, I'm gonna go over a couple quick things that I've done to try and keep it going. I've managed to keep get it going for up to 24 hours at one mo at one point. Uh, it's too early to be talking, but yeah, uh, I got it going up to 24 hours at one point. Um, right now, it's probably been going about an hour. So we will see if what I've done now has made any more improvements or made it any worse and uh, see if we can get this thing going. If not, I'm gonna MacGyver some kind of parts together, rid of all three of them, and try and make one so I can stay warm. <laughs> but yeah, that's the uh, that's the goal for today. I just wanna say thank you all to everybody who joined Willie's Truck Life. I greatly appreciate you guys supporting him. He's a good old Newfoundland boy. Uh, definitely a legend for living in that truck. For 13 years I managed to convince him the other day to finally go wash it at the cost of washing my own of course to motivate him but he got a video on that you guys should go check out as well and uh, for right now we're gonna hop inside get a little bit warmer and um, check on this heater and show you guys what I've done let's get to it Woo, it's chilly out here get me in the house Alrighty, now that we're in the house, let's go check out the diesel heater and see what's going on with it and see what I've changed in order to try and keep it going a little bit longer. So as you can see, I've definitely got a long extension. And my theory behind this was that if I can get the heat blowing as far as possible away from the diesel heater, then it won't read such a high temperature. And, um, it seemed to work a little bit. It definitely on screen reads the wrong temperature. Rome showed he took the cap off and Gina's van life as well also took the cap off of their intake side just to get it more airflow in through. I did the same as well. And another thing I did is I seen Chrome kicking his heater and I got so frustrated with mine, I did the same. <laughs> so I hit my screen and as I mentioned in my last video, this would not work on manual at all. Like not even for a second. Now it won't work on auto, <laughs> but it works on manual and I can turn it up and down. But like I mentioned, the temperature doesn't read right. But where I've got it on manual now, I can kind of override the temperature a little bit but I still wanted to keep this tube in here to basically blow all of the heat as far up forward as I could so that back here doesn't register so warm. So right now we have 25 degrees in here. And if you were to look on the screen, the screen would read probably about 30, 35. And that's how far off that temperature reading is 
from an actual one. Like I mentioned, it's still not really trustable because it does shut off at random times. The other night I was sleeping and I heard the powering down sound. Um, since I've hit it just with one of them, uh, like I said, the manual works now, the auto doesn't, but it also doesn't speak to me anymore. So, which is fine because I didn't want to hear from it anyway. You know, I just want it to work. As long as it works, it doesn't need to speak to me. Anyway, like I mentioned, if this doesn't work today, then I may just dig into this guy and see if the temperature sensors have the same plug or if they're the same kind of style temperature sensor. I know sometimes they can differ between different brands or different uh, versions of it. I know that this screen has a different connection plug than that screen. So yeah, there's little tiny differences. For the most part, they are all the same, but just do your research. You know, I'm not an expert on this stuff. I'm learning as I go. But as the owner of three heaters, I am, I'm definitely gonna say I've learned a lot through owning them over the years. I don't know everything, I don't think anybody does. I don't even think the manufacturers do if you look at the manual and read the writing on that. Oh my God. Little to no instructions, basically crayons. But anyway, we're gonna let this run and see how long it goes for. And um, while I'm waiting, let's see who shows up. I'm parked in the uh, usual spot here at Deerfoot City and uh, lately the guys have been all kinda pulling up in the mornings and saying hi, which I really enjoy. So um, also a couple new people as well have uh, strolled by knowing where I'm to and uh, I greatly appreciate you guys coming by. Well, that didn't last long. So that just goes to prove that even with the intake cap off and the ex the heat vent side, I don't know what you're gonna call it, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Where the heat comes out, having that tube as long as mine is even still doesn't get it an away from it enough. To s it doesn't get it an away from it enough for it to not still overheat. That's what I'm trying to say. Hang in there with me, folks. This is why I don't like doing instructional videos. But anyway, you guys can see here, clearly it's still overheated. So uh, all of my efforts so far have still failed. Next step is to possibly take it out, take that one apart and try and jam them together to make one decent heater. I can't really do anything parts wise for the small one that Chrome gave me, the two kilowatt, because I actually looked at it and that one's not a Viver. And like I mentioned, that one's my favorite one because it's the one that actually lasted the longest. So, um, Viver, what's going on here, guys? But yeah, I'm gonna try and cobble together these two Viver heaters and try and make one heater. But at this point, it's not looking like any of them are gonna be any type of reliable, so. Been doing a lot of island lately and I uh, don't really enjoy that so hopefully we can uh, make something happen here but for right now I'm gonna go grab myself a coffee come back here and wait for the guys to show up and uh, also wait for that Sun to come up before I tackle anything Cause like you guys seen a second ago it's definitely chilly here but I'll catch up with you guys when the Sun comes up Selling candy in a white van, it's oh, Halloween. <laughs> no, buddy, Mike came by with some candy. Oh, fucking box. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, congratulations on your uh, 5,000 followers. Thank you, man. Thank you. We're doing go awesome now, Bob. There you go. Rich. 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 That's it. Getting new doors for the truck and everything. Yes. We will shop at Valley Village next week. Now. It's, oh, that, that's splurging now, oh, buddy. Oh, just better than Mom, I suppose. <laughs> A little while later and our friend Johnny ended up showing up as well. For those of you who follow my channel, 
You remember this guy from when I switched his transmission right here on the street. Unfortunately, that video was deleted for whatever reason. And while we were all hanging out, we ended up getting a pleasant surprise. Hey, I know that guy. It's Corey. There's my little buddy. There's my little buddy. Good morning, brother. What brings you this way? Oh, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a surprise. Look a little smoky up there. It's getting bigger. So since Corey decided to join us and surprise us with a visit, we ended up hanging out and chatting the morning away. But eventually it came time to me to get back to messing with these diesel heaters and try and get one good enough to actually be able to put back in to my home. I honestly can't count the amount of times that my diesel heater has been in and out of this part of my van. And I'm pretty sure I've covered this before at least one time already. But for everyone that's curious, I'll give a reminder on what it looks like laying in the snow and looking up underneath the van to where the diesel heater is mounted. Let's go. Once underneath the van, looking up, you can see the exhaust, the intake, and the fuel line. Also, the four bolts you're going to need to remove in order to get the diesel heater out from inside of the van. Another thing to remove is also the fuel pump wires and the fuel pump itself. But yeah, that's my task for today. Didn't want to make another heater video, but with winter coming on, I want to be prepared, so I'm going to try and get all of this ready. I'm going to go inside first and get this one ready to remove and uh, see what we can cobble together to try and make a working heater. Of course, I am going to use the test bench, the good one, to make sure that it's actually going to be able to run before I install it in the van this time. As you can see here, since we've installed Corey's heater, it's been working just like it should. Just sitting here talking with Corey, and with everybody having restriction issues with their inlet and their outlet, got me thinking about this one, because this is the one that only lasted a month. And I'm thinking that if they're having restriction issues, well, that's a whole lot of restriction. So, we're gonna see if we can switch them out with another one or possibly even ditch that snub altogether and uh, leave the cap off of this one, try it again. That is gonna work, but we'll do that before we disassemble it and use it for parts. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get at this one, pull that out, and then we can mess with it a bit more. And why are all my doors doing this? <laughs> I'm gonna have to really talk with the builder of this fan, man. I'm telling you. Anyway, so this guy should be all loose now. I've got them all undone on the inside or on the outside. Sorry, I just gotta loosen this guy off and disconnect the wires right here and then it should be good to come out and unfortunately where the wiring for some of them are different if the screen is different you cannot use the wiring so you have to rewire everything each time you do a diesel heater which really is a bummer that's why my screen keeps getting closer to my heater Eventually, I'm just going to put the standalone unit in here for the amount of times I keep bringing them in and out. But for now, we're going to try this one more time. And after this, one other thing I want to mention is this was supposed to be a review of their new brand or new line of diesel heaters. I think that was a lie because 
even though it had a nice new orange face cover on it this my friends is an older style diesel heater and i know that because of the screen this screen has been around a while i've done some research on it and the screen is not their new line so that means they're putting their old heaters in their new kind of orange fancy casings and calling it a new line and i don't know if they're going to do that until they can flush out the old ones and then continue to put new line ones in afterwards but that's just my theory on the thing i think this is an older one they put lipstick on a pig to try and make it look like their new brand it's the only thing i could think because this is definitely not a newer style heater and just so everybody knows here's where the temperature sensor that i believe is wrong with the one inside my van that's where it's located i believe because this is the glow plug so and also if you go to change your screen you need to change your computer as well so yeah just a little advice for anybody who needs to know that i have one more sticker left so i thought it would be funny to <laughs> cover up the beaver with my sticker i have one left so yeah hey buddy what's happening dude what the heck do you got there i got you a care package i figured something to keep you warm what the heck do you got here brother we'll open it up and look what the heck oh heck yeah dude blankets i'm definitely gonna need blankets with the rate these heaters are going at well keep digging there's more more oh, i like that blanket dude blue with my van oh, and everything look, it's huge oh yeah dude massive that's gonna be warm oh yes what's in here now dude dude are you serious really got your heater too holy crap dude come here buddy, hey, buddy. oh man thank you so much dude really and it's the same exact one as my red one here. So now I'll have, like, if there's ever an issue with this one, at least I know it's compatible parts. But a new heater? <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Thank you so much, man. Oh, you're very welcome. We gotta stick together, buddy. Heck yeah, man. Absolutely. Let's keep warm. And as you guys seen, Corey is still working like a champ so that's awesome and out of all of the parts and pieces we got here if anything happens this winter like you said we're gonna stick together and we'll get at least one of them going with all the parts and pieces we got here <laughs> so, let's well, get her installed let's do it what we did just notice is that this one has the four snub as well and like i was just saying this i think is going to cause a lot of restriction so the eight kilowatt inside the van right now has a one snub for the or a one tube thing. Hey, listen here, you. <laughs> but it has one heat vent coming out. So I think I'm gonna put that one on this one so that there's no chance of this one having that uh, overheating issue as well. And I'm gonna do exactly like I said I would do on the other ones is take this cap off, put a tube on there so we know it's getting a full full air through the heater and there should be no reason for an overheating error and if that doesn't work then we're just gonna have to put a turbo on it man i don't know what i'm gonna i don't know what to do after that you know put a turbo on this end have it blow through no reason for overheating maybe i'll be the first one to turbo a diesel heater stay tuned okay so like i was mentioning we're gonna switch out the internals of this just so that everybody doesn't get confused with all of the heaters going on here i labeled them so that it's a little easier to understand so that one came from chrome that's the two kilowatt this one was sent from a subscriber last year that gave up gave up on me in minus 30. this one this one came from corey and this one came from vivo but where i was talking about the restriction issue we're going to switch them that's why i have that little switcheroo 
because this one is now going to be the internals of the Weaver scent one. And then I'm going to take the internals of the Cory scent one and put them in this guy. Yeah. If you understand it, you understand it. If you don't, then I'm sorry. But yeah, that's what's going on. Once you have them open and apart like this, it's going to basically look like this. Uh, I'll put up a little picture right here explaining what each part does. Give you guys a second to look at it. But what I'm going to mention to you guys is that inside and internally or what whatnot, they're basically all the same. This is an 8 kilowatt, like that's an 8 kilowatt. For people who say that they're all the same size, they're just labeling them different sizes, this is the proving one. So this is my 2 kilowatt, and that's the 8 kilowatt. And there's a clear size difference. So just so you all know, from a 2 kilowatt to an 8 kilowatt, the size is actually different. But where you mount the actual heater to your vehicle is all the same size hole. It's just the unit itself is bigger yeah now I'm gonna take that one out put that in there take that one put that one in there I don't even get it at this point <laughs> so like I mentioned sorry can't you see I'm filming here I'm trying to like give instructions and stuff so as you can see once they're out they're basically the same like little tiny differences but they're all built kind of the same and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and switch this one out to the black one. Another quick piece of advice I wanted to mention, your screen, and I even try and keep the fuel pump with the unit itself. So as you can see here, the two kilowatt, I have the screen that came with the two kilowatt, and then the fuel pump, and then a spare fuel pump that a subscriber sent to me for the two kilowatt. So I'm gonna keep all of the two kilowatt stuff together. I need to keep all of the eight kilowatt stuff together. And as you can see here, I even marked them for the different versions because as I, as far as I know, the colors mean the different versions. The one that came in this was supposed to be an orange one. And that's why I say, I think they're pumping out their old heaters in their new casings, just to try to get them out the door, basically. But yeah, I'm marking everything as best I can. I did at one point used to tear apart engines and work at an engine specialist shop. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty used to labeling all of the parts and stuff like that, keeping everything in order. So let's hope that this keeping everything in order pays off in the end. It seems to have so far and always has for me. And uh, yeah. Also, for anybody curious on what size hole you need to drill in your vehicle in order to mount one of these things, this will give you the right idea on what size hole you need to drill. So, yeah. Uh, the reason you have to do this, a lot of people think that you could just drill the exhaust in the intake. That's incorrect, because if you want to mount it to your body with the plate, then you need to cut out this hole. Even Viva themselves did the exact same right here. So this would be your floor of your vehicle and then this is the hole you need to mount because this piece of metal here will count as that plate that you see this guy right here so this piece of metal acts as that plate that plate is in your vehicle when this plate is in your vehicle that's the hole that needs to gape through because your hole gets sealed off with this the reason you need to cut a big hole versus just these small holes is because when you mount the plate in order to get access to these bolts again then you would have to pull up this whole metal plate but if you cut that hole then you can just get at them easy just like their standalone just like their stand does right here so just a little tip for anybody who's curious on that hope i explained it okay and look what willie made for us what a perfect time for a lunch break thank you willie mm. okay you guys so the battle is won or the battle is done and i think i won the new heater is finally in the van everything's all hooked up 
and I have made some modifications to this snow cannon here. So this is the heater that originally was in this thing. It's the one that I just pulled out of my van that Beaver sent me. Like I said, it half works. So we're gonna keep it on the stand and do some testing with it. One of the tests I wanna do first is doing running it with no nose cone. So there's literally no chance of any kind of restriction. And then also back here, I cut open this entire hole and kept the cap off as well. So it's a straight through shot. There's no restrictions anywhere. There should be no reason that this should overheat. Also, this turns. So, yeah. And I've got the other two heaters packed away and then the garbage in that one. So we're gonna do the final hookups of inside the van. I have to do the ground wire and fix that bloody door. And it's good to go. Now we got all the wires connected for the diesel heater. We can complete it by putting the fuse in. And this is the screen. As you can see, I'm just mounting it temporary because it, we're gonna hope it's there permanently. But for now, we're gonna do this. And then if we have to do something else, we can test it all out. Okay, here goes nothing. Weird. So I've run this screen before. It's gonna take me a minute to remember how it works. But uh, yeah, I remember that I did really like this one because it was just simple. I didn't have a bunch of options. It was just on, off. If it turns off, then you figured it. But it's kinda like a carburetor in that sense. Well, I just heard a vibration, came in, and the top tried to vibrate off. So I just threw some tape on here to try and hold it down. There's no real heat on the plastic end. It's basically all here. I can feel it heating up right now, and here is no heat at all. Oh, but having this cone off definitely, definitely has a lot more suction. So I might get a piece of tube like this and extend this maybe to another spot, I'm not sure. But get another tube at least to come up so that it clears all the debris. Once we were done with the diesel heater installs, Corey mentioned that his van wasn't throwing heat and he thought that it was the thermostat. So we decided to change it since Canadian Tire was so close. Unfortunately, we ended up running into a little hiccup, of course, our own faults do it two times because we rushed the first time and don't rush stuff that's all I gotta say about that so yeah got it the second time now we're just gonna let it set in and then should be good for a fire up and to add the radiator fluid once again <laughs> all right you guys it's the next morning I'm absolutely beat we ended up spending a little longer than we should have on working on Corey's motorhome it was such a simple job. I didn't mind helping him, he's helped me. That's how we do it in this community. But we, regardless, spent a little too much time on it, just trying to rush it the first time. Thankfully, John came, talked some sense into us, and we did it the proper way. <laughs> Moral of the story, don't rush a simple job because a simple job be can become something more than what you expect it to be if you rush it. So yeah. Also, that could be a good tip for Weaver, because it seems like they're trying to rush their heaters out. Take your time, you guys. Build a good product. We don't want to be buying absolute crap. And on that topic, I just want to mention, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Corey, for buying me that new heater. 
I, met, I ended up mounting this uh, extended tube onto this one as well, just because I've kind of enjoyed having the accessibility to pull the heat anywhere I want. Uh, at night, I end up pulling it off just to have the, you know, back here heat because that's where I'm sleeping for the most part and I don't need to heat up up here. That's what I'm trying to say. So, uh, yeah, but this thing has been working like a champ and on high on low it's just doing its thing it's taking a regular amount of fuel i do want to mention the one that beaver sent me probably due to its issue with whatever it's got going on but that thing was drinking like five liters in 24 hours which is it's a lot of fuel so this thing has just been sipping on it i think i went through like maybe a quarter tank since it's been on and it's been close to on for like 17 hours now so yeah thank you so much Corey for that and thank you all for helping me get to 5,000 subscribers that is amazing you guys 5,000 subscribers that blows my mind and also for you guys support on watching my last video about the Viver diesel heaters I'm really happy to be able to share this knowledge with you guys and get the warnings out because I've seen far too many people buying these heaters and just expecting the world out of them when in reality there are a lot of issues people just don't speak about. You can go for a more high quality heater such as like an Escobar. Uh, there's a place here in Calgary called Polar Mobility. Van Maruth actually got her diesel heater installed by them. It's a little pricey like I said the, more, the higher the brand but you're also buying quality and you can get a gas heater versus these dirty old diesel heaters that plug up all the time. So eventually one day, you know, I'll get to a point where I can get a nice gas heater, plumb it into my fuel tank and be done with all this auxiliary diesel crap. I'll donate all my heaters off <laughs> to people who need them and have the right power source to run them. But that's enough of me rambling. I really appreciate you guys all hanging in here, man. I really do. It means the world to me that we can help this channel grow. And uh, I'm really enjoying having you all here with me, following along on my crazy life adventures. You know, there's a lot of ups, a lot of downs, but that's van life, you know. This is the reality of it. Not everything's glitz and glamour. We have struggles that we need to go through. There are plenty of people doing a lot worse than we are. And uh, I think it really, it well, I know it really means a lot to me to be able to give back to those people. Because as you've seen, you know, it, it comes back to you. It's called karma, right? Like, Corey started off in a Honda Pilot, kind of bummed about being in a Honda Pilot. He met up with all of us, and we totally changed his mind on how it feels to be a vehicle dweller and live in a vehicle. You know, it's not something to be ashamed of. We are living the life that we want to live. I know I am, for the most part. But... I believe that once you get used to and comfortable to this lifestyle, it's a um, it's a big eye opener to a lot of people. Um, I've had emails, comments, and even people coming up to me in person saying how it actually has changed them for the better. You know, being more organized, being more able to adapt to certain things in life, and this life and lifestyle definitely puts that on you. You need to. Uh, be a MacGyver in a sense and also be a survivalist to just deal with the things that life throws our way but we never give up on living life because life is the most precious thing we have and on that note you guys I'm gonna end the video off here thank you all so much again for all the support and we'll see you guys in the next one also if any of you have stickers or want a sticker on this diesel heater testing stand that I have such as this woman that I met here in the parking lot. Be sure to email me for the mailing address to get yours put on here. All links can be found in the description below.